Hello there, welcome to another edition of our Visual Basic Tutorials. I'm Sean Greasley, and in this tutorial I'll be discussing file inputs within Visual Basic. Now, we've, in the previous tutorial we looked how to save and uh, output uh, information to a text file. Now what we want to do, we want to load files into our text box here. So let's see how we can do this. So let's copy a lot of the information to do with output from our previous example. The file location will be the same because we're opening a file, it will still have a location. Uh, instead of showing save, we want to show open. This will show the open dialog as opposed to save. Uh, the file location will equal the file name retrieved from the common dialog control. That's the same. And instead of appending or outputting, we're going to input into our text field for example. Now, uh, the difference here, we want to loop through the text file. It could be a while loop, it could be a do loop, it could be a for loop, for example. Uh, we want to loop until the end of the file has been reached. So, uh, we don't know when the end of file is, so a do or a while loop would come uh, in handy here. So, if we say do until end of file, I'll get that up again. Okay. Uh, so what we're doing here, we're opening the location as before, but we're inputting this time. We want to construct a loop uh, which loops through all the text within the file. So take this as a file. It's going to get retrieve the first line. We want to put the first line into our program. It will then go on to the next line. We want to put the next line into our program. It will go on to this line here. We want to put that line in until it gets to the EOF, which is stands for end of file, which will be somewhere down here at the end. So we want to do until EOF input data. Now we declare. Uh, we're declaring a, a variable here, data, which stores the line. So it's a string variable which stores the line here and puts it into our program. It will then reset itself and set itself as the next line. So this is what data is. We then want to update our txt field, but we don't. Uh, we don't want to erase each new line. So we say txt.txx equals itself plus uh, data. So uh, then we can say a loop. We want to put EOF here. I'm sorry, uh, we want input as well, not print. Okay, so let's uh, have a look what this is doing for us. So we're opening the file location for input. Simple. We wa then want to loop until the end of the file has been reached. Now what this does, it checks if uh, the end of file has been uh, met. And, uh, this is the constraint also which will get us out of the loop if the end of the file has been met. Uh, the data stores the line, the current line, so looking at this line, data will then be this, 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 and as data keeps changing its value, we want to take data and append it to our uh, text object on our form. So let's run this. Uh, we want to load a file. Say this one here. As you see, it's a very scrambled because we haven't opened a text file, we've just opened something called an RND file. I don't personally know what an RND file is. So if we save the contents here, say hello, my name is Sean Greasley. How do you do? Smiley face. So we're using a lot of lines here. We then want to save this as uh, vb.text and save. Uh, clear the text box so it's totally empty we then want to load this file open as you can see it says hello my name is Sean Greasley how do you do 
you might want to say oh it's not leaving return spaces as it did this is because uh, windows it's a thing with windows to be honest uh, it doesn't store uh, or retrieve the return spaces within our text file so if we open our text file vbtxt as you can see it stored it on new lines like so but this plus here it doesn't actually tell us we want a new line so if we say plus data plus vb new line we know in the previous tutorial was that the vb new line function gives us a new line so let's delete the text box load vbtxt open as you can see it's giving us a new line every time a line is being added into our text box and it's as simple as that really that so that's file input and output within visual basic and once you've had a little time to put some of these um, tutorials together you might be able to make something like this now this is a knots and crosses program I did uh, during my time at university um, you have to insert credits to play so we'll insert a pound three times over so we've got twelve credits and we want to play against the computer rather than another player Yes, uh, we can then set the computer ability to easy or hard so uh, say easy it randomizes a location as you can see but if we put on hard it uses a little bit of AI to block where you're going so if uh, I put here it has to go there because I've tricked it uh, so if we have a new game so if I put one here it'll put itself there then of course we have to block him off and again and that leaves us with that so, and uh, also within this program I've used a little file input here and these are previous games uh, so this is the game we've just had right at the bottom here it lasted eight seconds and there was uh, no winner and uh, this happened at ten to six let's double click this it replays the steps as they happened during the game so the delay is used with timers this is used with file input to get these games and file output into uh, in order to process these games into text files so that's a few uses of text files uh, within applications you may want to create. So I'm Sean Grizzly. Thank you for uh, to listening to this tutorial on file input and output. Uh, I hope you have a good evening and good night.